Madison. Madison is a four-year-old Border Collie, female. And she is with us for five weeks of board and train. And as you can see, she is a little skittish. She doesn't super like to be around me yet. Although we did make some great progress in the house at our first session. Um, she can hear the chickens in our chicken coop and she's going a little bonkers to go over there and try and eat them. Madison is here for basic obedience. She doesn't know much obedience. She's never been walked on a collar. So she's on the harness that she came with. And uh, she doesn't know really any commands at this point. Madison uh, lives with another border collie that is about two. And Madison has become uh, food aggressive with her housemate dog. And so we're gonna be working on that after we work on some obedience with her. Um, I'm told that she is ball crazy, although I just threw a ball a little bit for her and she showed pretty much no interest in it. She did pick it up once or twice, but um, not in a way that would suggest that she was real interested in it. And inside she'll take food from me. It took about 20 minutes of getting used to me before she was ready to do that. So that was pretty much all we worked on the first day. Just a little bit of hand feeding. And then evening time was bonding, relationship building, building trust with Madison. And you see she is a different dog the next morning. Here I have a collar on her and a 30-foot nylon line just as a security policy in, t in case she decides to take off. Um, I'll be able to catch up with her within 30 feet there and grab the line. This is really our first real... Uh, attempt to play fetch session and I noticed that she right away I noticed she runs out into the field expecting you to throw the ball in between you or over her head something and it's just not the way I like to play fetch so I'm non-reinforcing a lot of these bad habits now Madison's uh, almost four years old and so these habits have been reinforced for a long time it would be much easier as a trainer to introduce a form of physical punishment here and get rid of habits. But I want to use fetch and ball and tug play for rewards with Madison. And I do not want that colored by punishment. I am going to use a lot of frustration, but you're going to see through this video, it is an absolute balancing act to keep a dog engaged in a game that it likes while you frustrate it. And so sometimes I'm going to non-reinforce things I don't like. Sometimes I'm going to withhold reward of things I, for things that the dog is offering that I don't like. And sometimes I'm going to have to use throwing the ball, which is the dog's primary reward here, as um, a means to keep the dog engaged, even if the behavior it offered was not what I want the end result to look like. And here... One of her bad habits is running way out in the field. And when she does, sometimes she misses that you threw the ball over her head because she turns around and looks back at you. So we just have to deal with that. And here, she's her other bad habit is throwing the ball on the ground in front of you instead of delivering it to your hand. I don't like that. So I do not allow her to get another throw. I don't pick the ball up. I make her bring it all the way to me. And sometimes, you know, after three or four attempts, um, I'll still throw the ball to restart or maybe I'll only throw it a foot or two which is not what she really wants she really wants to chase us down the field see here she's she's dropping the ball six feet from me and expecting me to play fetch and go pick it up and I'm not going to play that game but you'll notice she'll start to self-gratify by throwing the ball for herself and catching it or thrashing it around uh, by the rope So you have to combat that as well. Uh, I can use the leash a little bit here if it's near me, grab the leash and reel her in. But uh, because she's not accustomed to collar pressure, I have a challenge there. This is only our first day of real work. But I really want to use fetch and ball play and tug play to gratify her in our work. So I've got to get this out of the way first. 
Here I've sped the footage way up. We're gonna do a bunch of reps of non-reinforcement. And I wanted to show kind of how this is because if, if you're struggling with your dog with fetch, you've got to uninvest yourself in the game somewhat. You'll see here, if this game ends right now and it's just time to be done, I'm fine. The dog is going to be the one who feels like they got cheated in that situation. But what is going to happen by non-reinforcing the behavior we don't want it's a form of punishing the dog. It's not a form of punishing the dog that hurts. It's just a frustration building event. And while in one session you may not see the results, if you're consistent and patient and you play this game correctly, take the pressure off them, move back. I'm showing her what I want here. And here I noticed she started to check out a little bit. So I picked the ball up and threw it again just to get her interested in the game. She still feels very strongly here, uh, my spatial pressure, because this is only our first day of actually working. So we're going to do some things to alleviate that, as well as um, some things to gratify her and make her more interested in playing with me. But at the same time, we're going to use frustration whenever we can to uh, fix the way she plays fetch, because it's not going to be productive for us if she throws the ball and i got to go pick it up by chasing after it 10 or 12 feet every time. And here we're down we're down to 6 inches. This is a big progress actually. It just doesn't probably doesn't seem like progress because we sped this up, but to go from the dog throwing the ball 10 feet from me to 6 inches in front of me is a big step for the first day. This the last 6 inches is actually much harder than that whole 10 feet though. The 10 feet happened in a matter of 4 or 5 repetitions. The 6 inches happened in 20 to 40 repetitions, maybe more. Here, our second day, uh, we're gonna work on some food rewards for basic behaviors. And we've worked on some of this in the house. So we've gotten luring going, although luring with Madison to start out is tough. She's definitely getting better at it quickly, but uh, she tends to get very still when you move, which is a border collie, sort of a herding behavior and uh, that makes luring difficult. It's not pure prey drive like we see a lot of times. So she does love these chasing rewards though. So I try to use these when she really gets a behavior good or when I wanna build engagement and build her interest in what we're doing. She's accepting the touchpad very quickly. Uh, I find that dogs who are comfortable jumping onto furniture in the house have usually no problem getting on a touchpad. It's the dogs that have been punished for getting on chairs and sofas and ottomans and things like that that uh, balk at this and think it's a landmine when I bring it out. Madison's not that way. She jumps right up on the couch with you and snuggles. Uh, clearly no compunction about furniture for Madison. Madison's actually a really fun dog. I like her a lot. She was... Uh, jumped up on the couch with me the first or second night and uh, took my wife's normal seat. Kim came in the room and said, oh, I see how it is. So I decided to bring out a different toy for fetch and see if we can build some object commitment. I talked about balancing acts in the fetch game. And object commitment is kind of driven by possession or pos possessiveness of the dog. And so it's absolutely a balancing act that we play in building object commitment to get them to continue to hold a toy or a retrieve object and uh, giving it up. And here I'm actually using tug, which she, she enjoys, but she doesn't fully commit during tug. She, she'd rather chase than tug. And I'm also starting to ask her for behavior in order to unlock me throwing the toy. This was a new concept to Madison, but some of the behaviors I'm asking for are just for her to get closer. So working on the recall sort of movement, not necessarily finished recall. And then I'm going to start to ask her for sits and downs. I, I kind of gave her some physical help to get into a sit so she understood that that was part of this process. And then uh, we'll start to work on downs in the same I'm hiding the toy, and she's a little confused, thinking I already threw it. Get her re-engaged in the toy. Notice all of that non-reinforcement that we did didn't show up fully in those first two sessions. 
Now she is bringing it right to my hand. We're not perfect yet. She's not pressed against my thighs, holding it against my belt buckle. But this is a big improvement. The other thing that I'm doing here is I'm working on getting rid of this habit of hers of running out into the field by throwing the toy in different directions, usually 90 to 180 degrees from the the way that she runs out into the field. And I found that with Madison, this can help to bring her in. And you'll start to see as the session goes on, she discontinues some of this running out into the field. I found moving around, whipping the toy around also helps to kind of focus her on the toy and make her still sort of that border collie herding behavior. There we go. Got to sit out of her. Madison accepts verbal cue very quickly. While luring is a challenge, once we start to put behaviors on verbal cue, she doesn't need lures anymore. We usually get the behaviors very quickly. Here I've turned around 180 degrees to the direction she wants to run and wants me to throw the toy. And this is helping to draw her in. You can't really tell, but there's a gravel drive uh, right in front of me here when I face the camera. And so there's not a ton of space for me to throw. There's a building, my camera's sitting in a building. And here we're at uh, day seven, end of the first week. You notice Madison is offering behaviors beautifully. She's offering sits and downs. Uh, she's doing them on lure and on verbal cue now. When she's super excited, I'm adding a little bit of luring to kind of get her in here, charge up our marker system. This is actually right before uh, morning of Saturday classes that we're holding at our property here. And so we're working as some folks are starting to arrive. I can she's she's looking over to that side of the field because cars are starting to pull in or out. I can't remember. Maybe this was after class. But we're just working through her basic behaviors, the uh, position change, sit down. And Madison's going to be, or she is training in German. Uh, Madison's humans uh, speak a little bit of Dutch. And so the German and Dutch was close enough. And they thought that that would be helpful with their other border collie who's training in English so that the two dogs aren't confused by each other's commands. I highly recommend this, by the way. If you have two dogs and you're going to be working with signal control with two different dogs at the same time, use a completely different set of commands that don't sound anything alike. And you'll be able to signal control your different dogs uh, using the different languages that way. See, Madison is just glued to me. Notice the leash is on the ground. I'm not, I'm not hauling her around by the leash. Uh, the leash is there as a safety in case she does take off. Oh, here she disengaged for a second. That would have been a good time to have had the leash, but I didn't. But it's really just a tool to make sure that um, that I'm able to keep her engaged and she doesn't get a chance to check out. I do not allow dogs to do checkout behaviors. If I notice it too much, we just end the session. Like this. She's, she's sort of checking out and looking around. This is usually when I'm starting to think maybe we need to cut this session off, but what it was, she needed to potty. So I took her off the field there and pottied her and she's right back in. We came back, I decided to bring out the tug toy again. Notice she's coming back to me again with the tug toy. She's offering or on command sitting beautifully. And as you can tell, this is a very happy dog, happy to do this work. We have used zero force with Madison up to this point. I've used a little bit of physical help where I'll push her a little bit to get her into behavior because of that border collie stillness and what plays as uh, classic opposition reflex where they kind of lock out their body. Sometimes they need a little bit of physical help to assume new uh, body positions like sits and downs and standing back up and things like that. And so we'll do that. But I did not consider that aversive in any way. It's just kind of <laughs> pushing the dog around to get him to do the thing and then rewarding them for it. I do have a flat collar on Madison. At some point as we finish some of these behaviors, I'll have to see how she responds to pressure and we will see um, what she needs in order to finish. I'm not strictly working a process toward finishing here that uh, is going to include punishment in a physical way but we'll see kind of how she presents uh, 
working in distraction as we go forward. But her engagement is coming along very nicely and her understanding of our verbal marker system is beautiful and we've already got a lot of these behaviors onto verbal cue. Notice she's coming right to me with the toy and putting it right in my hand. We're gonna, there we go, that's what I really want. I really want the dog to present the toy in the very front. That was probably the first time that she really did it beautifully, but notice we're working against frustration here and balancing toy commitment and she's self-gratifying by whipping that toy around. And we're back into some of this bad behavior because of the frustration. So like I said, absolute balancing act as we work this uh, process where here I notice that we've gotten a few reps of this old behavior coming back and I'm just not gonna play that game. So I'm non-reinforcing it and then I'm going to put it away. And we'll go back to some food reward. She's, she's thinking, did you already throw it? She looks out in the field again. Um, she's pretty scattered when she really wants to play fetch for, for a reward and doesn't really want the food. So we try this a little bit. It's a no good and decide to call the session there. Hope you've enjoyed week one of Madison's time with us. I am certainly enjoying it. She's a super fun dog to work and she really enjoys her time out on the field, especially when I bring out a toy for her to chase. So we will be back with more as Madison's five-week board and train continues. Thank you very much for joining us. Semper Outax.